Okay, nice to meet you. Uh, nice to be here. It's, very, it's a uh, great pleasure. So today we're going to be talking about modes versus computing and some of the use cases that have been developed for the past five years. But just before, oh, okay, sorry, that's the first slide. <laughs> so just before uh, talking about multiverse, I want to say a few words why quantum computing is important. And I selected two examples where we believe quantum computing can bring great uh, advantage. So the first one is AI. So we have seen in the past years that uh, the, some complex AI models, especially in large la language models, that require intensive training and uh, very expensive training as well. And we believe that quantum computing has the key to deal with large volume of data and pro potentially like tackling this kind of problem and reducing the training time and making training more efficient for these li large language models. Another one is in the helm of uh, optimization. So we all know that uh, quantum computing can bring uh, substantial advantage in optimization, especially in the cases where classical computing fail. So for example, in, cl in discrete optimization, and uh, the example I bring is the example in the left-hand side, sorry, uh, is the example of like electrical grids, for example. I will talk about this, uh, a use case we have developed, uh, where we have a very discrete example where we have to place batteries in a grid. So it's a, it's a binary problem, zero, one problem. And classical computing usually struggles to find optimal solutions. And we believe in multiverse that like quantum computing, but also quantum inspired, that we'll be talking about it, can bring a solution and can to this kind of problematics that are bottlenecks for most industries and, uh, and can really reduce, for example, the carbon footprint of the, of the companies. So we are multiverse, as I was saying, and we are creating value today in quantum computing. Uh, and we have two main uh, products. The first one is Singularity, mostly focused on optimization, but also machine learning. There is a lot of optimization in machine learning. And the second one we have recently created is like Compactify AI, which is uh, created to reduce uh, the complexity and the sizes of like uh, large, uh, large language models or machine learning models in general. So we are a software company and we are hardware agnostic. So we can connect to all softwares that are there out there in the market. Uh, and we provide this like SaaS platform where the industrials can come to us with a problem and can be solved in, a, in the whatever quantum technology that's outside there. And also, we are world leaders in this technology called Quantum Inspired. I will talk more about it in the next slide, uh, where we use classical computing, but some ideas coming from quantum physics to solve those problems. So this is what I said. Like uh, we, we are actually working the intersection of these two worlds, like the first one, quantum computing, but also quantum inspired that can, be, can bring value today uh, to many companies. Uh, so what is quantum inspired? So uh, usually when you talk, like at least in multiverse, when you talk about quantum inspired, we're focusing more on tensor networks, which is a sort of generalization of uh, linear algebra or concepts in, in linear, linear algebra, such as vectors and matrices. And it was created by the physicist to uh, actually understand complex quantum physical systems. Uh, and we realize that they can be used in other use cases such as optimization, AI, and simulations. So just to give you an example, imagine have like a, a many-body system or a wave function that you can see here. Uh, what we actually do, we're going to give some structure to this, uh, to this uh, wave function. So you can see here two examples on the, on the left-hand side. Uh, sorry, on the right-hand side, there is the MPS and the PEPS. And, uh, to understand and, uh, and try to optimize and reduce the dimensionality of this system. And um, as such, for example, we, we realize in multiverse that uh, we can use this kind of technique to work in optimization, AI, and for example, simulation. And just for the, like, uh, we are working on this kind of technology for a long time. We have like uh, more than 9,000 citations on, on our papers. Okay, so as I was saying, like we're working again in this intersection of these two worlds, like one of tomorrow, like quantum computing that uh, industrials will come to us with some problems that they want to understand what is the capability of quantum, but also we can bring value today uh, with tensor networks uh, and uh, solving problems that are difficult today with these ideas uh, that come from quantum physics and can eventually be also translated to the quantum physics tomorrow, quantum computers, sorry, tomorrow uh, for accessing all these uh, computational capabilities. Uh, some figures about multiverse. So we are a fast-growing company. So today we're 100 
20 people working in four, like, actually are six, in six offices, but uh, the main headquarters are in Spain. I'm sorry if it was <laughs> in Spain, we have a small office here in Paris, also a, a big office in Canada. Uh, we have more than 60 use cases developed for, with like f more than 15 blue chip clients. So like uh, we are working real industrial use cases that have relevance to, to the industry. Um, some revenue figures like uh, in 2023, for example, we have more than ab about $10 million uh, of contractor value sold in 2023. So we have solid uh, revenue growth. And we are developing these two hardware like SaaS platform, Singularity in one hand, that uh, is a solution for the industries, but also Compactify AI that's designed to reduce the size of uh, machine learning models. And I, I'm very proud to work in Multiverse because it's, uh, the team is world class. We have more than like uh, uh, many PhD students uh, and the team is very strong and uh, very interesting to work with. And just some like uh, interesting uh, collabs that uh, we got this uh, year in 2024. We are we were like uh, ranked as uh, or as future uni uni unicorn. So as I was saying, like we are working like in a broad variety of uh, industrial access, going from like historically we start with like finance. So we have many use cases in finance. I will be talking about one specific use case as option pricing but also in very different domains, so such as automotive, healthcare, defense, and we worked with different like, big companies, as you can see here in the board. And uh, I will deep dive in some, some of the use cases that have been developing, and I will start with uh, a use case in deep learning option pricing. So not sure how, much of, how many of you understand, uh, know what is option pricing, but uh, it's a problem in finance of pricing an option, and usually it boils down to solve a uh, partial differential equation. Uh, we can also do it by, by Monte Carlo. So solving a part, uh, what we did in multiverse, so this is like not multiverse, but uh, we can solve partial differen differential equations by, uh, with like a uh, machine learning model. So the, the machine learning model will actually approximate the solution of this partial differential equation. And what we actually did, it, which is n was not done before, is replacing these matrices that are the machine learning model by uh, tensor networks. And uh, the idea is that, like, using ten that if you use tensor networks, you can reduce the complexity of the, of the matrices and improve training. And that's what actually what we observed. So here in orange uh, is one of the results we got with a big bank in France. Uh, so we can see that the orange curve is the tensorized neural network is actually learning faster and finding a, a, a more stable uh, a more stable solution for the problem. Uh, so some figures like we train three times faster than the, the traditional neural network counterparts, uh, and we use many, much less, like uh, we require many, much uh, less parameters for training for achieving the same accuracy. Another, so just for the record, so can I go before? Okay, yeah. So here we didn't use quantum at all. It was like only based on, uh, on uh, quantum-inspired techniques. Uh, one use case where you actually use quantum and quantum annealing, but also quantum-inspired, is, is a grid planning uh, use case. So in this specific use case, we have like uh, an electrode grid, and we wanted to place batteries in the electrode grid so, so that we would optimize some KPIs. And the KPIs were like, uh, we don't want to install batteries everywhere, it's too expensive. So, uh, but we also, want to place, place them in strategic places so that, for example, if, the, if a node of the grid is disconnected, we, we can continue to, to, to provide energy to the rest of the grid. So there is all this kind of like metrics that you have to take into account. And uh, it's a very discrete model, and we use Singularity, our optimizer backend, to, to solve this problem in several, using several types of technologies, either quantum-inspired, but also uh, uh, pure quantum using an annealer and the results are actually very good. So we're very surprised So just these results like just for, for a, a small disclaimer is that we took our existing grids But for uh, we just use like a uh, fake data for 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 this presentation So it's not a very realistic so to say like grid But it's a very difficult problem and you can see that the benchmark we are using that are, are the small balls They are actually not finding minima whereas uh, or better results whereas Singularity could find them uh, quite well. 
And for these results here, the specific results is using an annealer. Uh, so as I was saying, Singularity is this platform where the clients can easily access some of the technologies, either tensor networks or quantum. And we provide a front end that is can, can be in Excel or Python. We also have some web app uh, applications, depending on the, what, what, what's the need of the client. And uh, what we'll do is that they will easily access, uh, they, they come with a problem. This problem will be sent to our backend. We will be processed by our, by our software and sent to some of the backends, either quantum or quantum inspired to solve, and they get the solution ready to use and in a very easy way. OK, uh, so switching a bit to Compactify AI. So this is our new technology that we're developing specifically for reducing the size of uh, LLMs, or large uh, machine learning models, or deep learning models. And, uh, and the idea is, is more or less what I was saying, is that we're going to replace uh, the, the matrices, the dense matrices, in a machine learning model by tensor network matrices. And we did some exercise with Lama Chu from, uh, from Meta. So originally, the, the, the model has 7 billion param parameters. So uh, the model size is 24 gigabytes. And we managed to reduce it to 30% of its size. So that's this small Lama there. And the question I have to ask is that, like, is this reduced model actually performant or not? And that's what, what I'm going to show in the next slide. But just first like deep dive a little bit on what was done. So here on the left hand side, you have what is the original like Llama model. And what we did is on the right hand side, this we can see in black and with the logo of multiverse, we are actually replacing uh, the, the matrices by tensor networks and putting some structure in these matrices and optimizing or doing the gradient descent in a smaller number of parameters. Uh, what it means in terms of training. Uh, in terms of training, we observe that we actually need half of, ha half, half of the number of epochs to train the models. We, tra we, train, uh, we tested it in two data sets, the giga word and next sum. But also in inference, so like the fast forward like of, the, of the network, we realize that we actually do it faster than the usual model, because we, the multiplication is simpler. So we're using the structure of tensor networks to make multiplication between matrices, and we can do it faster. So we have faster training, and uh, in terms of KPIs, so we compared with the rogue KPIs, which is the standard like uh, metrics for evaluating the performance of this type of models, and we have a slightly uh, worse performance, but it's not like if we compare uh, of with the time of training and uh, the inference time, maybe it's not that bad. Actually, it's actually quite positive. I think I would say. So, um, so yeah. So as I was saying, like uh, we are, uh, Compactify AI is actually working in this. Uh, uh, in, we are working. Uh, we are trying actually to, to re sorry, uh, Compactify AI is like uh, is he is here to reduce the amount of like, uh, um, the the. Like the, the exponential increasing of energy costs of the new machine learning models, uh, and uh, and reduce the electricity bill and limit supply of the AI chips. But also, as I say, multiverse. We are here. We are working on different interfaces like optimization, general machine learning models, uh, and uh, we are creating value today for the industrial like uh, problems. Thank you. Thanks very much, Asa. That was very interesting. Uh, in particular, I'm very interested myself in the relationship between tensor networks and uh, machine learning models, so it's very cool. Um, we do have one question. So you mentioned a lot of the models that you looked at in tensor networks are quantum inspired, but there's also some work in converting tensor networks to quantum computers. Yep. So have you looked into any of that, or do you think there's any advantage to doing it? Uh, actually, we did. Uh, so I'm currently working in a use case with a bank where we have to, so the, the, the problem is about uh, uh, encoding probability distributions in a quantum computer. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard, it's a difficult problem, and we require many gates. So what we did is like train and tensor network to learn this probability distribution and then like map the tensor network into a quantum, into, into a quantum circuit. Mm -hmm. So we could observe, for example, for many number of qubits that actually need like less 
gates to actually do this mapping. So mm -hmm. it was an interesting uh, result we got in this direction. Mm -hmm.